From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. And it's 5 o'clock here on your Friday. Good morning to you. I'm Lauren Casey. Good morning, I'm Rafael Sanchez, and these are your headlines on this November the 20th. The grieving never ends. The mother honoring her daughters killed in a house fire. Her message as the investigation now marks a milestone. White tents sitting outside of a downtown hospital have some residents worried. Working for you, we're going to hospital leaders to clear up any concerns. The pandemic is once again forcing students out of the classroom and back online. We're live this morning with the message One Learning Center has for all parents right here in central Indiana. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Indiana. On this Friday, Lauren, I stepped outside of the official WRTV living room, mm -hmm. opened the door, and it doesn't feel too bad here in Franklin. <laughs> a light wind, Todd Clausen, so I think it's gonna be a good Friday. Oh, well, it's better than when I walked in and you know the door about slammed shut, probably, because <laughs> it's so windy here downtown when I came in, Raphael. But Todd, uh, sometimes that's good news because we have a warmer day ahead, right? Yeah, you know, these are southerly winds. So yesterday we got up to 65 degrees, and I'll admit yesterday was probably a little too windy for most of us uh, across the area. Today the winds will continue to diminish and temperatures will be back up into the low 60s. So if you liked yesterday, I think you'll really like today, even though it may be a degree or two cooler, but still well above normal. In fact, we're above normal already with temperatures this morning as we start off your Friday in the mid 50s in India, 55, 59 in Lafayette, 54 in Bloomington. Winds are out of the southwest at 12 miles per hour. It's still gusting some places in the 20s and 30s to the north, but these will continue to diminish as uh, the morning wears on. There's a little bit of cloud cover that'll drift through at times during the course of the day today, uh, but we will remain dry. And that is the good news. And as you plan your day, Try to get outside. Again, the wind will be less of a factor today. 57 by 11 a.m. Then we're into the low 60s through the afternoon hours. And then still the 50s if you have plans on this Friday night. Big changes, though, arrive over the course of the weekend. More on that coming up in just a few minutes, Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks. Let's take a look right now at traffic up on the north side where things are quiet. I-465 over the White River. You can see there are no problems here going eastbound or westbound. But we'll continue to monitor things and keep you updated throughout your Friday. Raphael? Lauren, a heartbreaking milestone this morning for a Carroll County family. You see, tomorrow marks four years since that fatal fire which killed four girls there in Carroll County. The fire on East Columbia Street in Flora that happened on November the 21st, 2016, it's still part of an ongoing arson investigation. The four sisters who died ranged in age from five through 11 years old. There is a reward offering up to $5,000 for any information that would lead to an arrest. We spoke to the girl's mother who grieves every day for her children. It's very emotional, not only because it's Thanksgiving. I'm always like this, child. Um, it's all the holidays, it's, you know, it's just very hard. I just tell whoever knows something or feels something, go talk about it because you hiding it or you keeping it in, it's not doing nothing but hurting you. Uh, coming up later on Good Morning Indiana, more of my conversation with Galen Rose and what the state police superintendent, Lauren, is saying about this ongoing investigation. Raphael, thank you. Let's go to the coronavirus pandemic now and its continued impact on Indiana. This morning, state health officials report more than 7,100 new coronavirus cases. Since the pandemic began, more than 275,000 Hoosiers have tested positive for the virus. Health officials confirm 59 more Hoosiers have died with the virus. Since March, nearly 4,900 Hoosiers have died with COVID-19. Let's take a look now at the state's hospital resources. This morning, just 21% of the state's ICU beds remain available. At this hour, 73% of the state's ventilators are ready for use. And you might have noticed that these tents out of Methodist Hospital downtown, a now deleted social media post claimed the tents were being used for patients because the hospital ran out of beds. The chief nursing officer for IU Health, Methodist and University Hospital says that is not the case. And the tents have been up since the spring as a precaution but they say they've seen a steep increase in hospitalizations in just the last few days and are working to step up their intensive care facility capacity. 
We are not at 100% capacity with our ICU level, but we are getting tight. As we see these numbers increase, the acuity or the seriousness of the illness that we're seeing in the patients is increasing. And so having ICU level space available um, is gonna be a priority for us. So we are preparing for the numbers to get bigger. We are preparing to make sure we have the space to care for the patients and so that we can provide care if they need it. The latest numbers from the State Department of Health show 3,063 people hospitalized with COVID-19 across the state. And WRTV is working for you going inside the COVID crisis in Indiana. Tuesday at 7 p.m., you'll hear from a 30-year-old man who survived a harrowing battle with the coronavirus. And now we're talking with the experts, everything you need to know about a potential vaccine. Our WRTV news special Inside the COVID Crisis airs Tuesday at 7 p.m. Looking forward to seeing that this morning. A tutoring service is seeking to fill the gap as more kids return to learning from home because, of course, COVID-19. WRTV's Nicole Griffin is live this morning in Fishers with more details on this resource being made available across our community because of the pandemic. Nicole, good morning. Raphael, good morning. And as the pandemic continues and schools close back down because of the rising number of cases, Sylvan Learning, which has four central Indiana locations, is doing everything they can to keep their buildings open. They say that is because they know parents are still looking for that in-person help for their children. They say since their buildings are smaller, tracking mask wearing, sanitizing and social distancing is easier. I talked to one local mom who relies on Sylvan Learning for her son. What two sounds does A make? F and A. Yes. Avery Mills is a third grade student in Warren Township. His mom, Precious, works from home. In the spring when schools shut down, she did virtual learning with Avery and his two siblings. There you go. There are days where I feel like I'm, you know, well, I don't want to say being the perfect parent, but like on it. I made up a schedule on doing it, and then there are days I'm just like, everyone's taking a break today because I can't. Next week, all three kids will be back at home doing virtual learning once again, which she says can be overwhelming, especially when it comes to Avery. Just hard to talk about, you know, when your kid's behind, he's in third grade reading at like a, a kindergarten level. Um, I think they got him up to almost first grade at this point, so, and I can see it at home. In the Car. Precious knew she needed to get Avery more help. After an assessment with Sylvan Learning in August, Avery now does three sessions a week with his tutor, Hannah. We know that right now during that pandemic, it's so important for families to be supported consistently, especially with everything being bumpy. During the pandemic, Sylvan offers the same lessons in person and virtually. Their main focus is on writing, reading, and math. And after just a few months, Precious says Avery is now excited about learning. It was been going great. Um, I was keep on practicing so, so I can get better at it. And he's more confident, which I love because he, you know, he's as hard as it is for a parent. It's more hard for the child when they're trying and trying and trying to learn stuff. They go to school all day. They come home. They're still learning. You know, he was even overwhelmed. And Sylvan Learning knows that money can be a barrier for families when it comes to hiring a tutor. So coming up here on Good Morning Indiana at 530, these balloons are a sneak peek of what's ahead. We will show you how Sylvan Learning is working to make it easier for local families during the pandemic. Working for you live this morning in Fishers, Nicole Griffin, WRTV. Nicole, thank you so much for that report. We look forward to more on that coming up here this morning. Well, we know that COVID-19 is responsible for thousands of Hoosiers dying here and losing their jobs across the state. And the number of people in Indiana filing for unemployment benefits is on the rise again. The U.S. Department of Labor reports more than 16,000 Hoosiers filed for unemployment for the first time during the week ending November 14th. That's up from 14,000 the week before. Claims have been elevated since the pandemic started, forcing business activity to slow down back in March. So Lauren, this morning we have some new developments from WRTV Investigates. A judge in Hancock County has ordered a Greenfield Monument Company to refund customers thousands of dollars. You see, Greenfield Granite is accused of taking money from grieving families and not finishing their headstones. So far this month, a judge has awarded more than $5,000 in judgments against the company. 
These small claims lawsuits are in addition to the one filed by the Indiana Attorney General's office. The head of the company, Amy Stroll, she died by suicide back in September, and her husband has filed for bankruptcy. At 509, getting a flu shot is more important than ever this year due to COVID-19. You can get one for free today thanks to the Cold Smire and the State Health Department. They've teamed up to host a free flu shot clinic Friday just outside of Lucas Oil Stadium from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. It's open to anyone regardless of your insurance coverage. Vehicles should enter from Gate 8 located off South Capitol Avenue. You'll have to fill out some paperwork and then get your temperature taken and then a pass a verbal COVID-19 screening before you receive a shot. You will remain in your car while receiving a shot. Walk-ups are also welcome. You should enter at Gate 7, again, off Capitol Avenue. Gate Walk-ups enter through Gate 7 off Capitol Avenue. Drivers off Gate 8. Let's get a check right now of our bus stop forecast, Todd, as folks are heading out there early this morning. You know, it's really not bad at all as you head out this morning. Obviously, at this time of year, a lot of times you think you're walking out to really cold temperatures, and usually you are. Uh, but today's not one of those days. We're in the 50s right now, so as the kids head off to school, you head off to work. You may want a light jacket here this morning with temperatures in the 50s. But by this afternoon, look at that. We're up to 62 degrees with partly cloudy skies. So all in all, a very pleasant day. Now it is a little breezy out there currently across the area with still some wind gusts in the 20 to 30 mile per hour range. We no longer have that wind advisory in place, but as the day progresses, these winds will continue to decrease. We go down into the 20 mile per hour range by the noon hour, so that's just breezy. And then throughout the evening hours, the winds will continue to subside. So the day just gets better and better as it goes on because the winds diminish. We see more in the way of sunshine and the temperatures get back up into the 60s. We'll talk more about the weekend forecast, which is not as good coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, Todd, thank you so much. The number of Americans dying with COVID-19 has hit an all-time high. This morning, the urgent message from the nation's health officials. For Shelbyville, Anderson and Muncie, you're watching Good Morning Indiana. It is 514 this morning. Terre Haute police say they've made arrests in the death of an ISU freshman. 18-year-old Valentina Delva of Indianapolis was shot and killed back on September 18th. Delva was sitting in a car outside of a house party when she was shot. Terre Haute police say that David Farrell and Wesley Meadows are charged with criminal recklessness in Delva's death. The pair is due in Vigo County Court Monday morning. This morning, a wrongful death lawsuit blames Tyson Food for failing to provide adequate safety measures at its plant in Waterloo, Iowa. The lawsuit was filed by the son of a plant employee who died in April after contracting coronavirus. It says that Tyson failed to provide appropriate personal protective equipment and implement adequate social distancing. Nearly 1,000 workers at that plant contracted the virus. Several died. Tyson declined to comment on the lawsuit, but says their top priority is the health and safety of their workers. This morning, coronavirus cases and hospitalizations are surging in all 50 states. As ABC's Elizabeth Schulze reports, the CDC is now warning Americans not to travel for Thanksgiving as new restrictions go into place across the country. With coronavirus cases and hospitalizations accelerating in every state, the CDC now forecasts an additional 46,000 Americans could die from COVID-19 by December 12th, bringing the potential death toll to a staggering 298,000 people. We know every day we come into work, it's going to be one of the worst days we've had. At the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota, doctors and nurses are getting called out of retirement. There comes a point where our healthcare system stretches and eventually it breaks. And when that happens, it's too late. Amid the crisis, the White House Coronavirus Task Force briefed reporters for the first time since July. Dr. Anthony Fauci touted the effectiveness and safety of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. So we need to put to rest any concept that this was rushed in an inappropriate way. This is really solid. But with the vaccine still months away from most Americans, the nation's biggest hospital groups are out with a new ad begging the public to do their part now and wear a mask. Several governors echoing that call. Mask up, Illinois. Mask up, Ohio. Mask up, Indiana. Yet a handful of states like South Dakota, where cases are up 400% in the past two months, are still resisting mask mandates. 
With new restrictions in place across the country, the CDC is now telling Americans not to travel for Thanksgiving and to avoid big family gatherings. Some governors writing in an op-ed, as hard as it will be not to see them this Thanksgiving, imagine how much harder it would be if their chairs are empty next year. There are signs Americans are heeding this advice. United, American, and Southwest are all reporting a spike in cancellations for Thanksgiving travel. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. At 517 right now, the World Health Organization is warning doctors to stay away from remdesivir. That's despite approval from the FDA. The WHO says that new research suggests the antiviral drug may not help lower the risk of death from the virus. Last month, the company behind the drug announced that the FDA approved it for treatment. This after initial research showed remdesivir may have some benefit in the fight against COVID-19. And so, Lauren, this morning, drug maker Pfizer says more than 20 million doses of its vaccine are ready for distribution. Earlier this week, as you may recall, Pfizer announced the vaccine in its possession is 95 percent effective. The company is expected to seek now approval from regulatory authorities across the world as soon as today. A Pfizer expects to produce 50 million doses by the end of the year and 1.3 billion doses next year. Good news on that front. Todd Clausen, it is a good day to say TGIF. <laughs> it sure is, Raphael, and it's always nice when we end the work week with decent weather, and that's exactly what we'll have uh, throughout the day today. Now, it's a little windy this morning, but those winds will continue to diminish throughout the morning hours. That's the good news. And by this afternoon, it's really pleasant. The wind's not much of an issue. Temperatures are nice and mild, and then this evening, it's very comfortable as well. If you do have plans uh, for this Friday night, maybe uh, you're heading uh, out and about to grab some takeout food to bring it home to your house and maybe you are going to be uh, dining somewhere you should be in great shape here are the wind speeds look how they diminish throughout the course of the day what does not change though is this arrow the wind will be coming out at the southwest throughout the day today so even as it diminishes it's still going to help to provide, to, uh, provide us mild temperatures uh, from start to finish uh, throughout the day today and we're in the 50s anywhere you go this morning a pair of nickels from Crawfordsville to Greencastle to Martinsville to Indy 56 in Muncie 52 is the current temperature in Greenfield and our temperatures will be in the 50s here throughout the rest of the morning hours back up to 58 degrees by 11 a.m. Uh, with skies today that are going to kind of toggle between mostly sunny and mostly cloudy at times. So we'll just split the difference and call it partly cloudy. But what ha does not happen today is we do not see any precipitation that is going to stay uh, to our north. Now highs look at this normal high this time of year is 50 degrees. We're going to be running about 15 16 degrees above normal today in many locales 65 in Kokomo 68 in Lafayette about 65 degrees here through the central portion of the state Crawfordsville Shelbyville over into the Martinsville area at 63 and about 62 in Bedford and 64 in Columbus today so very pleasant get out there and enjoy here's that evening forecast for you if you are going to be out and about you'll need a light jacket with temperatures that will be in the 50s now things start to change uh, tomorrow tomorrow we're going to start to bring in some rain showers and there could be a stray shower before the noon hour but most of the daytime hours tomorrow are going to be dry once we get to the evening hours that's when rain is going to start to develop across uh, the area and as we go over to TrueCast, you can see the timestamp on the top uh, right hand portion of your screen. This is 8 a.m. tomorrow and there could be a stray shower, but most of tomorrow, as I mentioned, is just going to be mostly cloudy. Then the rain will start to move in. Here we are at 10 o'clock. So this is after sunset towards the end of your day. And you'll notice the rain becomes pretty steady throughout the overnight hours, even mixing with a little bit of snow in northern locations. I do not expect any accumulation. You may see some flakes when you wake up Sunday morning. No doubt about that in northern locales as we pull down some colder air. Uh, but the ground's going to be wet, the ground's going to be warm, uh, so anything should just melt away. And then any precipitation, whether it's rain or snow, is out of here by the time we get to Sunday afternoon. So it's really overnight in the first half of Sunday that's really wet. And we're talking about potentially over an inch of rain in many locations. So this is going to be a good old-fashioned soaking for us as we work our way throughout the day on a Sunday, 46 degrees. And then it remains a little unsettled Tuesday and Wednesday with some scattered showers around. And then for Thanksgiving, Giving, we are looking at temperatures that will be right around 55 degrees. May have to throw in a few showers, but at this point, we'll just keep it mostly cloudy. Todd, thank you. A holiday icon expected to reappear next week. Still ahead, why the angel perched above downtown will have a brand new look. It's 522. Stick around. We'll be right back.
on town. Welcome back. It is 525. The coronavirus, Rafael, has put the brakes on a lot of holiday traditions this year. But wait one minute. This pandemic cannot stop the mysterious return of the bronze cherub on the air's clock in downtown Indianapolis. The cherub is set to return the night before Thanksgiving, just as it has for more than 70 years. But in the meantime, the clock has been undergoing some restoration. The cherub has been getting a little buffed up as well. Indiana Landmarks shared this video of the facelift with us. When the cherub returns, it will be shinier and cleaner than ever before. Be sure to look up when you're downtown at the intersection of Washington and Meridian to see this Indianapolis icon. So from that holiday icon to our morning icon, our Todd Clausen. Hey, Todd, and we love you even more when the temperatures are above freezing. What you got? And they are well above freezing. In fact, they're already above normal, Raphael, uh, for this time of the morning. Normally, we should be down in the 30s, and here we are sitting in uh, the 50s in many locations. The winds continue to diminish. That is uh, the good news. And here are those temperatures throughout the day, and I really think you're going to like them. There's a little period of cloud cover here this morning, but we'll burn that off by mid-morning with partly cloudy skies. Look at that already by the noon hour. We're up to 60 degrees. Degrees, and then we'll continue to warm from that point forward throughout the afternoon hours with most locations topping off anywhere between about 62 and 66 degrees. So for full 15 degrees above normal with the dry conditions making for a very nice Friday. Take advantage of today because the weekend brings some big changes. We'll talk about that coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues right here on WRTV. From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. Now at 5.30, a learning lifesaver. The people hoping to help school children being forced to return home for e-learning because of the pandemic. It's real. Even healthy people can get it. And once you've got it, and you've got it to this degree, it's all over. An Indianapolis nurse recovering from COVID-19 after getting a double lung transplant. Now she is sharing her harrowing story with WRTV. At 530, we want to thank you for joining our team here on Good Morning Indiana. We finally made it to Friday. Raphael Todd and yes. I are saying, wow, it seems like this has been a long week. Now, I've had a four-day week, so uh, I, I feel pretty True. good about yeah. it. But nonetheless, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. I've learned, I think, I'm going to start taking Mondays off for the rest of the year. We'll see how that shakes out. That's a good idea. And Todd Clausen, it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great Friday <laughs> throughout Central Indiana. Yeah, you know, it really is, and I need you to take advantage of today and get outside and uh, work off a little bit of energy because as we get into the weekend, we bring rain back and also some colder temperatures. So today, all you really need to grab before you go is the light jacket because temperatures are in the 50s. You don't even need the heavy jacket. No rain gear needed today and then have the sunglasses handy as well. Look at these temperatures. We're in the 50s. In fact, still close to 60 degrees in Lafayette. It's 55 in Indy, 56 in Muncie, and it's not just central Indiana. The whole state enjoying uh, this nice mild air in place uh, this morning with just a little bit of cloud cover drifting through and there's some rain off to our west, but that will not impact us today. That gets here uh, late in the day tomorrow. So here's why you need to take advantage. The wind is uh, still out there this morning, uh, but that'll decrease decrease as the day goes on. It becomes very pleasant this afternoon with temperatures into the low 60s. This evening, if you have plans on Friday night, you're just fine as well. Those weekend changes arrive really starting late Saturday as that rain moves in. More on that coming up in Maine weather in just a couple minutes. All right, Todd, thanks. Let's take a look at traffic right now as you're heading out the door, kicking off your Friday, your work day maybe. Here's a look in the downtown area, I-65 and I-70 at the North Split as you're coming around the curve heading towards Meridian and Pennsylvania streets. You can see traffic here is traveling smoothly. No issues to slow you down, Raphael. Uh, so, Lauren, Indiana's COVID-19 case is making another alarming jump. The State Department of Health reports more than 7,400 new cases of COVID-19. And that's an increase of more than 1,000 from Wednesday's numbers. You can see every day this past week, the state has reported more than 5,000 new cases. More than 275,000 total cases have been confirmed since the pandemic began. 59 more Hoosiers have also died with the virus. That brings the state's death toll to now 4,800. And 89. 
The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is officially advising Americans not to travel at all for the holidays. The agency says travel right now could spread the virus from one part of the country to another. But for those who still plan to visit family, the CDC urges people to wear masks, social distance, and wash your hands. This morning, students across central Indiana, Lauren, are waking up getting ready to log on to their virtual classroom. Yeah, it comes as many schools, Raphael, closed back down due to the rising number of COVID-19 cases across yeah. the state. And so WRTV's Nicole Griffin working for you, joining us this morning. She's finding out how a local resource in central Indiana is working to help families during this pandemic. Nicole, good morning. Lauren and Raphael, good morning. When the pandemic started, Sylvan Learning transitioned their business completely virtual in just 36 hours. That is because they know how important it is for parents and students to get that support. So today they are announcing Black Friday deals in order to make their services easier for local families to obtain. I talked to one mom who tells me just after a few months, her son is now excited to learn and more confident. And that just means that there's a bossy E and it's going to make it stand up and what? Say its name. Like, ho. Third grader Avery used to dread going to school, but now his mother says he's excited, especially when it comes to sessions with his tutor, Hannah. She's great. Um, she's great. She's perfect. From that first meeting, I really felt like, you know, they, along with me, wanted to put him first and they've been doing that ever since then. Precious Mills Avery's mom works from home. In the spring when school shut down, she did virtual learning with all three of her kids. It was like a wreck coming in here just because, you know, being frustrated with everything. Um, but they sat down and I think we even had like shared some tears together, which was, you know, just overwhelmed and needing help for him. Avery now does three sessions a week with a big focus on improving his reading skills. Precious says he has a long way to go, but I asked her what it's like to see her son now building confidence. Amazing. Um, I've never been more, um, I told Hannah, I've never been more encouraged about his educational future since I started with Sylvan. Avery and his siblings will transition back to e-learning next week like many students across the state and Sylvan wants to help parents that are looking for extra assistance. That is why on Black Friday they're offering a special deal. We cut our prices um, significantly so that way families like Precious um, and Avery can come in and just have a financial burden lifted from them. We really really understand that the coronavirus has really impacted people's lives, both educationally and financially. And this is kind of our day to say we want to help with both. And Precious tells me she does have a message out there for other parents who have children who may be struggling with their education, especially right now as they all continue with e-learning. That message is you are not alone. She says she knows how hard it can be to ask for help and money is often an issue, but she is so happy about the progress Avery is already making. Working for you live this morning in Fishers, Nicole Griffin, WRTV. We are covering more education this morning here on Good Morning Indiana. Today will be the last day for in-person in learning for all IPS students. The district will go 100% virtual beginning on Monday. That's a week before all Marion County schools are required to be online. Now, while the intent is to prevent the spread of COVID-19, the head of the CDC in Washington is now saying that schools are not the main source of the spread. The infections that we've identified in schools, when they've been evaluated, were not acquired in schools. They were actually acquired in the community and in the household. It's small family gatherings, family gatherings where people become uh, more comfortable. They remove their face mask and they get together and it's this silent epidemic that begins to transmit. But it's not inter-school transmission. The truth is for kids K through 12, one of the safest places they can be. The CDC Director Robert Redfield made those remarks during the White House Coronavirus Task Force press conference that occurred yesterday. He says it would be counterproductive to close schools in an effort to contain the virus. Now, this was the first media briefing for the task force since July.
At 537, a local nurse is one of just a handful of people who have survived COVID-19 after a successful double lung transplant. And now she's sharing how difficult her illness and recovery has been for both her and her family. Their dad had to sit down and tell them their mother might die. And they've had to try and cope with that. It's been since July, since I've seen my boys. And I haven't been able to hug them or love on them. And they miss me so much. Carrie Wegg has been a neonative intensive care nurse at St. Vincent Hospital for more than 25 years. In July, her whole family tested positive for COVID and everyone else got better, but she did not. Eventually, she was transferred to Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago, the first facility in the country to complete a COVID-19 double lung transplant. Wegg was the sixth survivor to undergo that surgery. It's devastating. I never thought something like this could happen to me. It's been so hard because I was healthy and I thought if I ever got it, I would be fine. I, I, I would just get like a cold or something. But no, it, besides death, I guess this is the worst it could be. While grateful to be alive, Wegg says that this has devastated her family financially as well. A GoFundMe fundraiser was started in her behalf to, by her sister to help cover the mounting medical costs. You can more, learn more about her story by visiting WRTV.com. The top dow is 539. Indianapolis-based Eli Lilly and Company now has emergency use authorization for another treatment to help COVID-19 patients in the hospital. Lilly says the FDA granted emergency authorization for baricitinib. The drug is an anti-inflammatory that commonly treats rheumatoid arthritis. A study showed the drug combined with Gilead Sciences remdesivir helped people recover from COVID faster and shortened their stay in the hospital. While this is an emergency use authorization, baricitinib has not officially been approved by the FDA to treat COVID-19. The FDA is still evaluating the efficacy and the safety of this treatment in ongoing clinical trials. Now, earlier this month, Eli Lilly and Company also received emergency authorization use for its experimental antibody treatment. And Tuesday at 7 p.m., we are diving deeper into the COVID crisis in Indiana. You'll hear from a 30-year-old man who survived a harrowing battle with coronavirus, plus the candid conversations with healthcare workers who are putting their health on the line to protect you. And we're talking with experts, everything you need to know about a potential vaccine. Our WRTV news special, Inside the COVID Crisis, airs at Tuesday at 7 p.m. At 5.40, let's get a check of our forecast for today on this Friday with Todd Clausen. And it's a good day for us here today, Lauren, as we round out out the work week as temperatures are going to be really nice and mild. In fact, if you walk out the door this morning, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised with the temperatures because we're all still in the 50s here this morning. And normally we should be in the 30s this time of year. And as you come home, temperatures are going to be in the upper 50s to right around 60 degrees. And here's why you need to enjoy it. Our average high is 50, so obviously well above that today. Look what happens for the next five days starting tomorrow. We are going to be below 50 degrees for the most part. Not only is it going to to be a lot cooler. We're going to bring in a cold front, which is going to bring in quite a bit of rainfall as we get into Saturday and Sunday. So we're jumping ahead here. This is Saturday now at 4 p.m. That's when rain chances start to arrive, and then they really ramp up as we head into Sunday morning. We'll use True Cash show you the timeline for this rain over the weekend coming up in just a few minutes. Hey, Todd, thank you. After more than two weeks, election results are still being certified. Coming up, the outcome of Georgia's recount and President Trump's latest move to challenge the results. And companies producing COVID tests having a hard time keeping up the challenges they're beginning to face with the rapid increase in demand. It is 542. Stick around. We'll be right back. It is 542. As more election results are being certified, President Trump is making new moves to fight the outcome. President-elect Joe Biden still facing barriers in his transition. And ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest now from Washington. This morning, Democrats in the House are demanding answers from the woman who's blocking Joe Biden from beginning his transition into the White House. Top Democrats are now giving Emily Murphy, head of the General Services Administration, until Monday to explain the delay, saying she has no conceivable argument to deny Biden won the election. It would really be great if the GSA would follow the law. There is no excuse 
not to share the data and let us begin to plan. It comes as more election results are certified, Georgia overnight wrapping up a statewide audit, reaffirming Biden's win. Meanwhile, the Trump administration is facing allegations of impropriety amid claims that election officials in Michigan backtracked on confirming election results after they were directly contacted by President Trump. Candidates don't choose the, who wins an election, the voters do. Two of Michigan's top lawmakers are set to meet with the president at the White House today, raising new concern that they may step in and choose electors that will vote for Trump, despite Biden's 150,000 vote lead in the state. It's certainly improper for any candidate on either side of the aisle to attempt to interfere with or obstruct a process that is very well ingrained in the law. Trump's surrogate still falsely claiming there was widespread fraud in launching long shot legal challenges, hoping to overturn the election results. Our votes are counted in Germany and in Spain by a company owned by affiliates of Chavez and Maduro. But among some Republicans, support now wearing thin. Senator Mitt Romney tweeting, it is difficult to imagine a worse, more undemocratic action by a sitting American president. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. This morning, if you've never received that federal stimulus check, now is your last chance to see if you are eligible for those dollars. So let's walk you through this this morning. You have until 3 o'clock tomorrow to register with the Internal Revenue Service. As you may recall, the agency sent letters to about 9 million Americans who may be able to claim that money. And that includes people who don't typically file tax returns, including people who are low income as well as college students. You'll be looking for the economic impact payment registration when you go to the IRS website. Well, the increase in COVID-19 cases is stressing the system for testing and long lines are starting to form outside of testing sites. The companies that make the supplies say they're trying to keep up with this increased demand. There's also an issue with human resources. Experts say there's only so much lab capacity and only so many trained people to provide the testing. While officials stress testing is important, it has to be done strategically. Been a lot of emphasis put on testing, but testing is only one piece of the puzzle. It gives you some information, and if you're not going to do anything with that information, whether it be targeted closures, whether it be staying home and isolating, um, it, it, we're not going to stop spread of disease. Well, as far as getting more tests, it's going to take a while. She says it takes six months or more to significantly increase production capability. The labs don't expect to see a ramp up in supplies until the first part of 2021. A former Notre Dame football coach Lou Holtz says he's tested positive for COVID-19. The 83-year-old legendary coach confirmed the test to a local South Carolina TV station, telling them he does not have a lot of energy right now. As you may remember, Colts coached at Notre Dame for 10 years and led the Fighting Irish to the 1988 title. We wish him a quick recovery and all of those across the country dealing with COVID-19. On this Friday, it is time to check on your forecast with our very own TK Todd Clausen. Good morning. Hey, Raphael. Good morning to you. And it's a great morning here weather wise across central Indiana with temperatures that are nice and mild. You notice the camera here shaking still a little bit as we're still dealing with some wind out there, but the wind will continue to diminish there. It's out of the southwest right now at 18 miles per hour uh, in Indy with that temperature of 55 degrees. Look at the humidity. The air is really, really dry out there. And that's why you may have saw uh, something yesterday about red flag or warnings. Uh, those are put out by the National Weather service when we have low humidity and high winds and that's exactly what we had yesterday and it's basically to prevent you from burning because fires could spread rapidly. We do not have that advisory out there any longer but still I would advise against uh, any widespread burning here uh, over the course of the day today because while these winds are going to diminish they'll still be out there throughout the day. Some gusts currently up there in the 30 mile per hour range but look at this. This is the good news. When you walk out the door this morning uh, you're going to like it. You may just need a light jacket and that's just about it. 55 in Crawfordsville as well as Martinsville. A Lafayette at 59 right now and it's 56 over in Muncie. Here's how your day breaks down for us. Skies are going to be partly cloudy and temperatures will respond quite nicely with those southerly winds. 60 degrees already by the noon hour. Our high temperature today should get up to right around 63 degrees in the city. Maybe even a little bit warmer in some other locations uh, where we could be as high as 66 degrees. And then by 5 o'clock we're down to 60 and it's going to 
to be very pleasant for any evening activities. There's a little bit of cloud cover drifting through. These are just kind of those high thin clouds though uh, that are out there this morning. And as far as any rain goes, it's off to our west and that'll start to come in here as we get into the evening hours uh, tomorrow. This evening, uh, semi state football games taking place. Temperatures will be in the 50s if you're heading uh, to any of those. If you're just heading out on the town, uh, this forecast obviously applies for you as well. Sunset tonight is at 526. Now tomorrow is not a washout. As we start the day off, it's cloudy. There could be a spot shower by the noon hour, but it's really not until later in the afternoon and more so the evening that we bring better rain chances into the forecast. And it's cooler tomorrow with highs right around 50 degrees. And here's that spot rain chance as we work our way throughout the morning. But again, most of the day is going to be dry with just lots of clouds around. It's not until 9 30, 10 o'clock. You see the timestamp there just above my head that this rain overspreads the area. The rain is pretty steady overnight Saturday into Sunday morning uh, as you're sleeping. And then as we wake up on Sunday morning, you notice there's going to be a little bit of a change over to potentially some snow in northern locales. While you certainly have the possibility of seeing some snow up here in Lafayette, Peru, even over towards Marion and Hartford City, not expecting any accumulation. The ground really warm. We're coming off several days here with temperatures in the 50s and 60s. And then most of the rain and snow should be out of here by about the noon hour on Sunday. And but areas could see over an inch of rain across parts of the area. It's good old fashioned soaking Saturday night through the first half of Sunday. Then next week temperatures on the cooler side, 40s and 50s across the area and still a little unsettled, Raphael, with more opportunities for showers on Tuesday and Wednesday. So Todd, I have a question for you this morning. Have you put out your Christmas lights yet? Have you done that? I have done my outdoor Christmas lights, yes, but nothing inside. Okay, listen, I'm not going to need to borrow, by the way, Todd, thank you for offering that axe or that chainsaw. We'll need it this year because check this out, Todd. Walmart is now making it easier for all of us to deck the halls while staying COVID safe. The company is now offering to deliver a freshly cut Christmas tree to your door, ready for you to hang your ornaments. Walmart will also decorate your house with glistening holiday lights. Now, if you already have your lights up, like our own Todd Clausen, you, if you don't have them up, they, can, they have a team that will professionally install them just for you. And get this, when it gets uber, uber cold there in uh, February here in Indiana, they'll take them down. Home Depot, Lowe's, and Williams Sonoma are also offering similar services. So this, a kind act helping a Hoosier in need. After the break, how multiple people chipped in to give one man a helping hand. You're watching Good Morning Indiana on this Friday, right here on WRTV. It is 5.56 on your Friday. Raphael, a man working to get back on his yeah. feet, says he'll be able to keep supporting his kids thanks to a generous donation. I love the story. Through Goodwill Industries, John Wessel, he got a job cleaning the outside of the federal courthouse here in Indianapolis. But he uses a bike to get to work, and the one that he bought with his own money, it was stolen. A group of retired law enforcement officers chipped in to get him a new bike and a lock as well. But less than a month later, someone cut the lock and stole his bike again. So the Lawrence Police Department stepped in and found a shop willing to donate a bike, which they gave to John this week. I, I love that story. Listen, leave that man and his bike alone. <laughs> oh, it, man, twice. Yeah, leave any bike alone. It's right. not yours, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, there's so many people that rely on bikes to get around, uh, like that gentleman and people that bike around just for fun, supporting local businesses. Uh, and so, yeah, leave them alone. All right, outside right now, but that is a great story. Temperatures are in the 50s. If you are biking uh, this morning for fun or to work, uh, you're in decent shape. You don't really have to bundle up as much as you normally would this time of year with temperatures that are in the 50s. There's still a little bit of wind out there this morning. That wind will continue to diminish as the day goes on. And look where our high temperatures are going for the day today. We're all going Going back up into the 60s with partly cloudy skies that puts us above normal. Take advantage of today because big changes arrive as we head into the middle of the weekend. More on that coming up with your latest news headlines as well when Good Morning Indiana continues right here on WRTV.